Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're going to look at how we can take a matrix and decide whether it's going to be a reflection type transformation or a rotation type transformation, potentially even an enlargement type transformation. Okay, so just before we get started, the reason we're not going to be looking at translation type uh, transformations is because this is a type of transformation that would move the origin. Okay, so when we look at these... Um, reflections and when we look at these rotations the ref line of reflection is always going to be through the origin so that the origin doesn't move the point of rotation is always going to be around the origin so that the origin doesn't move no matter what you do with translations that origin is going to move so it's not uh, it can't be represented as a matrix transformation okay so just so just so we're clear we're only looking at um, types of transformations that will have um, the origin staying exactly where it is so we're either going to have a line of reflection going through the zero zero point or a rotation going around either direction around the center point as well we're going to be using the base set of coordinates of one zero and zero one the reason being is that from this base set of coordinates the coordinate 1, 0 to start with, this red one here, and the coordinate 0, 1 from this blue coordinate to start with here. You can see here that this nicely forms the identity matrix. So whatever transformation matrix that we're given to try and find the transformation of, we times it by the identity, but obviously when you times by the identity, you get back to where you started. So now this transformation matrix here is the transformation matrix that was times by one zero zero one but now it's also the coordinates of the image of our transformation so we're going to see here that we'll plot these coordinates here and then we'll just have a look at the picture and see what type of rotation or reflection it was okay so let's have a go at this uh, matrix here three zero zero three so we start off with the 1, 0 coordinate and the 0, 1 coordinate. Always. We always start with the, these two coordinates. These two coordinates form the base um, identity matrix, so they're really easy to multiply. What we'll do now is we'll do our matrix 3, 0, 0, 3 times by this identity matrix. And obviously when you times by the identity matrix, you get 3, 0, 0, 3. Oops. Okay, so our first coordinate, this coordinate here, is at the point 3, 0. And our second point is at the coordinate 0, 3. This is obviously our red coordinate, and this column here is our blue coordinate. Remember, this is how we um, perform transformations with... Um, matrices. We have our transformation matrix at the start, our coordinate matrix second, always in that order, and then our answer is the set of coordinates of our image. And we can see from these coordinates here that the 1, 0 coordinate has just been stretched out by a factor of 3, as has the blue coordinate has been also stretched out by a factor of 3. So from this picture here, once we've drawn all of our starting coordinates on and all of our image coordinates on, we can see where each coordinate has ended up. Now later we'll see it's important to have this in colour or some sort of labelling system, for example A, A prime, B, B prime, on your um, diagram so you can clearly see where each of the coordinates has ended up. Okay. So the transformation that we've got here is an enlargement by a scale factor 3 from the centre 0, 0. It's always going to be from the centre 0, 0, given that that is the coordinate that can't move. OK, let's have a look at another, another matrix here. We've got the matrix now, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. How can we tell what that matrix does? As we did before, always start with our identity base matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is our set of coordinates that we're going to work with. We're going to apply the transformation matrix of this thing here, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So this is our transformation. 
this is our set of coordinates, and our answer is going to be the the image coordinates or the final resting position coordinates. And obviously, when we times anything by the identity, we get that matrix again. Okay, you can see what's going on here. That matrix is going there. So now this is now the matrix of image coordinates. So let's plot them on a diagram and see how these two coordinates have moved to these two coordinates here. The first image um, coordinate is the coordinate minus 1, 0. So the red coordinate has moved over to this position here. The reason it's definitely the red coordinate is because it was 1, 0 was the position first in the coordinate matrix here, and it's also first in this coordinate matrix here in the first column. And the blue coordinate has ended up at the second column coordinate. So that's ended up at 0, minus 1. So we can see from the nice colours here that we have had a, um, a reflection. Um, we've had a, um, yeah, a reflection in the point 0, both vertically and horizontally. We could also think of this um, as a rotation 180 degrees um, around the centre point 0, 0. It's really important we do this in colour because we could accidentally get confused with thinking of it as a reflection in the y equals x line. And if you were just link, thinking about this question in black and white, you would be um, you wouldn't be surprised to be confused that uh, these two coordinates could end up as a reflection. But when you see them in colour, it's much more clear what has happened. The red coordinate has ended up round to here. The blue coordinate has ended up round to here. So they've both moved around 180 degrees around the centre. So that's the answer to this question then. The geometrical transformation of this matrix is 180 degrees rotation around the point 0, 0. So the way that we work through these questions here are by drawing diagrams and seeing where the two base coordinates end up after your transformation. Let's have a look at this matrix here now. 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. Same thing is happening. We're going to start with 0, so 1, 0, and 0, 1. We've got the hang of this now. So this matrix here is going to times by the coordinates 1, 0, 0, 1 to get this matrix again. So the red coordinate is going to be this column here and the blue coordinate is going to be this column here. So the red um, coordinate will move around to 0, minus 1, and the blue coordinate will move round to minus 1, 0. Now, it looks like it might be a rotation here, but they've rotated in a different direction, so we're going to have to think again about this. It might be a reflection in a line that's going diagonally as well, um, it could be the line y equals x, but if we think about the reflection over that line, that would take a blue to a red coordinate, which is not what we want. We want red to go to red, blue to go to blue. So let's just change the angle of that line. So it's like this now, and we can clearly see that that's much better. That's taken the blue coordinate down to here and the red coordinate down to here. So the answer to this question here is that this matrix defines a reflection in the line y equals minus x. So hopefully we're getting used to this notation now in that the coordinate min uh, sorry the coordinate 1 0 will always go to this first column here and the coordinate 0 1 will always go to this coordinate here. This will always be the blue coordinate, this will always be the red coordinate. Okay. Okay, so let's consider the problem in reverse now. So what we want is to find a matrix that is a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, so let's have a think about what this diagram would look like. It, we'd start off with our two coordinates, just as we would normally. And then the reflection in the y-axis, well, this is the y-axis, so it doesn't look like the blue coordinate would move. The red coordinate would move over to this position here, the position minus 1. 0. 
and the blue coordinate would stay where it is. So we have to think, therefore, we've got our original pair of coordinates, 1, 0, 0, 1, and that's going to be times by some matrix, so M we'll call it, so we'll call it 1, 0, 0, 1. This is our original set of coordinates, this is our matrix that we're going to times by, and we're going to get to the coordinates where the first coordinate was minus 1, 0, the second coordinate stayed where it was, 0, 1. Now given that this is just the identity in this equation here, we can effectively just delete it. So m is equal to minus 1, 0, 0, 1. <clears throat> you could think of it as this is now the new pair of coordinates, so it's the transformation matrix. The new pair of coordinates is this one here, and this coordinate here stayed where it was. So minus 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, is our matrix. Okay, so the transformation coordinates is also the image of the coordinates at their final position. We always start with that 1, 0, 0, 1 coordinate. <clears throat> Let's have a think about this one now. An enlargement from center 0, 0 by scale factor 2. So draw your Set your first coordinates up, stretch them out by a factor of 2 from the point 0, 0. And it's just these two coordinates here written in their column, 2, 0 and 0, 2, that is the transformation matrix here. 2, 0 came from this coordinate here, and 0, 2 came from that coordinate, the blue coordinate there. OK, final one now, quite a tricky one here now. Rotation 45 degrees anti-clockwise around the point 0, 0. And we want to find the matrix that represents this transformation here. So we're starting off with our bog standard 1, 0, 0, 1 transformation. And we want to rotate it anti-clockwise by 45 degrees. So now this red point has moved up to here, and the blue points will swivel round to this point here. But what we need to know is these final resting positions so that when we, after we've transformed by a matrix, this matrix M that we need to find, we've transformed the base set of coordinates 1, 0, 0, 1, we want to find where they end up so that we can then delete this matrix here and then that's just our answer. So. What we've got here is, let's just zoom into our diagram on the red coordinate here. We've got a line here. Now, it's been rotated, so the length of this line has not changed. So it's got a hypotenuse length of 1 here. And it's got an angle at this point around here of 45 degrees, because we were told to rotate by that much. So now that's left for us to do is a little bit of trigonometry work to work out where this coordinate now is, or work out the value of the x-coordinate and the value of the y-coordinate. So it's just a bit of hypothesis, it's just a bit of a tr basic trigonometry here. So for the y-coordinate here, it's going to be opposite equals sine theta times hypotenuse. So sine theta, sine 45 times 1, sine 45 is 1 over root 2. So that's the length on the, on the opposite side here. And the length on the adjacent side is calculated by a cos angle. So cos 45 times 1 will give you 1 over root 2 as well. So your coordinate up there is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. And it's basically mirrored. Um, so the x part of this coordinate here is also a negative. So this is our final um image set of coordinates then. So we, they go down in their columns. Um, once you've worked out the red coordinate, the red coordinate will go down here. The blue coordinate will end up in this position here. And remember that it's the matrix that has been times by these set of coordinates here that have ended up at this, uh, this matrix here. 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2 1 over root 2, 
So when we times our matrix, our transformation matrix by the identity, we don't really times by anything really, it just stays itself. So our transformation matrix is just a set of coordinates um, that we get here. So this here is our new matrix. This is the matrix that represents this rotation, um, this rotation transformation. Okay. So a general rule is this matrix here. So if you're rotating anti-clockwise round, you can follow this set of rules here. I don't really like to think about those set of rules there, so I'm going to move on pretty quickly. Um, just remember two definitions here. Invariant points, these are points which map onto themselves under a transformation. So if you remember that reflection over the y-axis, the point one, the point zero one was a invariant point. And invariant lines, these are lines which map onto themselves under a transformation. So again, the y-axis in that case um, is, a, is an invariant line. The line transformed onto itself. Okay then, so let's have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try these two out. All right then, so question one, uh, write down a matrix X representing a reflection in the X axis. Okay, so let's set up two sets of coordinates here. First coordinate will be at one, zero. This coordinate would be at uh, zero, one. And when I reflect in the X axis, that's gonna reflect this point here downwards. So we'll call this point B. This will move to this position here, B prime, so that will be now at 0, minus 1. <clears throat> and if I'm reflecting in the x-axis, the A coordinate won't change. That will stay at the coordinate 1, 0. So I've gone from here to here by some transformation matrix M. I've transformed the coordinates 1, 0, 0, 1 to the coordinates, well I do my A coordinate first, 1, 0, and I do my B coordinate second, 0, 1. So given that I've just timesed here by the identity, I don't really times by anything, it's just times in by 1. So this is my answer here. M equals 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Okay, part B, find the image of these coordinates under the reflection in the x-axis. Well, we can see here that when we reflect in the x-axis, it's only the y-axis that's changed. The y-axis number has become negative. So in this case here, if the coordinate 1, 3, the coordinate will just be now 1, minus 3. I don't really need to do any matrix uh, multiplication here because I can just spot what's going to happen to these coordinates. If it's reflecting in the x-axis, the y-axis coordinate is going to change. So that's what happens to those coordinates. Okay, let's have a go at question seven now then. Write down the transformation represented by the matrix M. So, as we did in the previous question, start off with your one, zero, zero, one set of coordinates. And we're then gonna transform this matrix to first coordinate is going to go here, so it's going to go to minus 1 over two, root 2, minus 1 over root 2, so this is minus 1 over root 2, minus 1 over root 2, so that has moved round from here, round to here, and for the second coordinate, we've got this moving round to 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, so it's going to go in this position here. So again, this is the B coordinate moving around from here around to here. So I remember the one over root twos, that was a 45 degree rotation. So I'm thinking that this angle inside here is a 45 degree angle. And we've already rotated 90 degrees. So 90 degrees add the 45 degree rotation to get around to this type of coordinate around here must be 135 degrees rotation. It's definitely going to be around 0, 0, because all matrix transformations, if they are rotation, rotate around 0, 0. And is it anti-clockwise or clockwise? Let's just imagine a clock going round. Yeah, it's going that way round. So this is going to be clockwise. 
Okay, so there we are. That's right. Okay, so on to part B now. So there's a couple of ways we could do part B. So we've got the point P Q, and it's been transformed um, to the coordinate minus root two minus two root two. Uh, find the initial values of P and Q. So we could think about this as a, an inverse matrix type question. If we had our calculator to do inverse matrices, we could think about it like that. Um, but we could think about it as an inverse rotation type question. So if we try and find the matrix with the reverse of this type of transformation here, in other words, the 135 degrees uh, anti-clockwise rotation around 0, 0, then that would be a good start. Now our 0, 1 coordinate, sorry, our 1, 0 coordinate would end up going round to here. This would be where A prime would end up, round to there. And the B coordinate would end up going round to here. So where would they end up? So the A coordinate would end up probably at minus 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. It's always 1 over root 2's with these 45 degree angles here. So I know it's in the top left, so it's a negative x coordinate, and it's in the top left, so it's a, it's a positive y coordinate, so that's why it's positive 1 over root 2. The b coordinate's down in the bottom left now, so that's 1 over root 2, so minus 1 over root 2, minus 1 over root 2, because it's in the bottom left. So this matrix here represents the inverse of this transformation here. So, if I want to find where P and Q originally were, then I just need to do the inverse to this coordinate here, under this um, reverse transformation here, to end up back where I was. So this here is the inverse of this transformation here. So now I'll apply that to where I ended up. And that was at the coordinate minus 2 root 2, so minus root 2 minus 2 root 2. Okay, so here I'm applying the inverse transformation onto a set of coordinates to find out where I was and where I started. So in this case here, minus 1 over root 2 times minus root 2, that's 1 and then moving across and down, minus 1 over root 2 times minus 2 over 2, that's plus 2. Okay, so my first coordinate here is 3. And the second coordinate here is going to be minus 1 over root 2 times minus root 2, that's minus 1. And this is going to be a plus 2 in this box here, so it's going to be 1 here. So my original coordinate was 3, 1. The value of P is 3, the value of Q is 1. And you can check that if I were to do, if I were to transform 3, 1 under this rotation uh, matrix here, that I would end up at the coordinate minus 2, minus root 2, uh, minus 2 root 2. Okay, so there we are then. We had a little bit of inverse questions towards the end there, which was quite interesting and mixed things up for us. But yeah, so the inverse matrix of a transformation is the same matrix as it would be to do the inverse transformation. Okay, so we thought about this question here as doing a rotation in the opposite direction round. Okay, that's how we solved this final question. Right, thanks very much for watching this video then. Have lots of practice on exercise 7b. It's quite a big one, so lots of practice. Um, and make sure you practice until you uh, cannot get these questions wrong. Thanks for watching.